Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this video. This is the start of a little series I've been wanting to do for quite some time now, which is a focus on my model car collection. Something that the opposite sex finds extremely attractive. Now, what I like to do is hunt for, for really good deals on brand new or secondhand model cars. And I specifically like to collect scale 143 motorsport vehicles and so what we're going to do in this series is we're going to look at some of the cars that I've collected starting with the actual car that the model is based on and then looking at the model itself in a bit more detail so please join me uh, as we look at our first model of the whole series which is the Ferrari 512M so let's start by looking at the motor vehicle that this model is based on that is the 512M. The 512M was the successor to the 512S, which itself was a successor to the 312P. These prototypes were built to compete in the FIA International Championship for makes. The model name 512 or 512 was a combination number signifying the engine displacement, which is 5 liters, and the number of cylinders, as it was a V12. The first 512, the S model, appeared in 1970. Now this was nearly a year after Porsche had debuted the 917 and dealt with all their own teething problems already. So you can now imagine that with this delay alongside Ferrari's own development issues, it meant 1970 was a long year for the Maranello team. Victory did eventually arrive at the 1970 12 hours of Sebring Admittedly, it was a minor consolation considering Porsche had won all the other nine races in the season. Ouch. Now, in the same year at Le Mans, the 512 proved as fast as the dominant Porsche. However, it suffered reliability problems, with all four entrants eventually retiring due to mechanical issues. The longest surviving Ferrari managed 142 laps before succumbing to its weaknesses and sputtering to a halt. Ferrari realized that some modifications were needed for foster circuits, and so an extra rear body panel was added to the 512S, and thus, the 512M was born. Now, speed had never been an issue for the 512, but with the improvements to both build and reliability, the 512M proved a mighty beast and achieved another victory in South Africa, which is my home country, at the nine hour Springbok endurance race at Kailami, which as a matter of interest, they resurrected just this year, last month. That race winning car, the winner of the nine hour Springbok endurance race, is the basis model for our review today. That is chassis number 1010. Sadly, this victory, along with the win at Sebring, were to be the only victories for the 512. As was so often the case throughout the 70s and the 80s, development of prototype cars accelerated at a staggering rate. And this constant innovation, along with the changes to regulations in search of greater safety, meant that by 1971, Ferrari turned their attention to a new 3 liter prototype, the 312PB, leaving the 512 in the hands of private teams. So our review model for today comes from the 143 Ferrari Racing Car Collection, which was a subscription-based magazine collection that ran a few years ago. Now in my personal experience, the models in these collections tend to be supplied by IXO models, which they're sort of like the Toyota of the model world. It's, it's reliable, it's available everywhere, it's not particularly special, but they're good, they're solid. Um, IXO models tend to be like that and as somebody who, as I said at the beginning of this video, is not necessarily looking for the most expensive model but looking for a good deal, IXO models often fall in that bracket. This model is mounted on a decorated plastic base and the car itself stands at an angle. Now I've personally always preferred the angled display of these models. I just think it makes the car easier to look at as opposed to the flat or straight options. This model also has a hard plastic lid and in some countries the Ferrari collection had like a soft plastic top which to me seemed pointless. It doesn't really look nice 
and it doesn't allow you to build a nice collection that's well protected. I'm never a big fan of that one. As it turns out, uh, you can very comfortably put those Ferraris inside the plastic container that Ferrero Rochers or Ferrero Rocher is coming um, as I am demonstrating on screen right now. Now there are two attributes that stand out to me when I look at this car. The first is the bold red finish and secondly are those gorgeous wheel rims. I love the contrast between the two colors and the good quality of the paintwork. The white wings are neat, although not as smooth or clean as one would ideally like. The smaller decals are good and well detailed despite their tiny size. Interior detail is what one would expect from a model in this price range. The small stickers provide color and variation within the cabin, but it's nothing special. A model like this is made to be enjoyed from a small distance as part of a larger collection rather than getting too close and looking at little details. The build quality is solid, if slightly imperfect. One of the small rear wings broke off during photography, but it was remounted easily enough with a tiny touch of superglue. The screw that holds the model on the base also seemed to strip slightly, so the car doesn't sit tight as I would prefer it to be. These are small niggles, but they are indications perhaps of a little bit of cost cutting. Despite the small imperfections though, I love this model. Prototypes are my favorite type of race car. I love the engineering and the pushing of technological boundaries. The 512 comes from an era where safety was almost ignored in the pursuit of speed and pushing toward the absolute limit. That hungry pursuit meant that it had a short life, but it remains a beautiful, almost primal machine. And I'm so happy that I have a model with which I can remember that car. So that concludes our first look at a model from my model car collection. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch it and if you did enjoy it, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to keep up with the other videos I post where I will detail more cars from my collection, looking at the history of the race car itself and then studying the, the model in a little bit of detail. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.